In my episode about Ridley Scott's Alien, I discussed the film's influence on industrial science fiction, a genre that embraces a grimy aesthetic with characters doing down-to-earth jobs while wearing practical clothes like jumpsuits. Right now, one particular example reigns supreme, the TV show The Expanse. Set in the not-so-distant future, The Expanse explores an elaborate conflict between three factions, Earth, Mars, and the asteroid belt. While the show's aesthetic echoes some familiar sci-fi sources, including Star Wars and Blade Runner, it also does a great job of creating specific fashion trends within the main three cultures and using costumes to build characterization. There is one very popular character for whom fashion plays a central role. Hi there, I'm Gavia Baker-Whitelaw and this is Behind the Seams, exploring the world of costume design. In futuristic sci-fi, costume design follows a sliding scale between pure fantasy and plausible speculation about the future. Our image of the future also reflects current social norms. That's why Star Trek's utopian setting featured women in 1960s miniskirts, and why a lot of sci-fi movies opt for a sleek, minimalist aesthetic reminding us of high-tech laboratories and expensive interior design. And when we see cluttered, eclectic imagery, it's often used to denote poverty or a dystopian scenario. The Expanse is, by TV standards, relatively serious sci-fi. Much of the conflict is based around realistic problems to do with living in space, such as the scarcity of water and air, or the difficulty of communicating over long distances and calculating the right trajectory for your spaceship. In turn, a lot of the costumes are what we generally describe as practical. Characters wear appropriate clothes for industrial work, like the ever-present jumpsuits. At the same time, there's definitely some artistic license at play. Like most sci-fi fantasy shows, the costumes include visual cues that inform the audience's experience of the story. Visual cues that rely more on familiar tropes than on realistic world-building. And that's definitely not a bad thing. In The Expanse, humans have developed the technology to leave Earth and colonize other parts of the solar system, creating a diaspora of different cultures. Mars is home to a heavily militarized colony of settlers who work hard to build a home on an inhospitable planet. Mars is better for everyone when everyone does their part. Their culture puts a lot of emphasis on duty and hard work, locked in a cold war with Earth. Martians see Earthers as lazy and privileged because Earth has most of the natural resources. Earth is wealthy but stagnant, with a stark divide between rich and poor, and high unemployment due to automated technology. Meanwhile, the asteroid belt is home to a kind of underclass within the solar system. Belters are more likely to be poor, and their bodies are taller and thinner due to living in low gravity. I'm sorry, the gravity of a real planet hurts. Season 1 begins on the dwarf planet Ceres, introducing us to belter culture. Embracing a cyberpunk aesthetic, we meet characters with bold hair and makeup, ragged clothing, and an eclectic sense of style. The protagonist is a detective who wears a fedora hat, echoing the aesthetic of 1940s noir movies. It's a very recognizable kind of setting. Later on, we meet the Outer Planets Alliance, or OPA, a more organized side of belter culture, where uniformed soldiers defend the belt against encroaching attacks. Based on a series of novels by James S. A. Corey, there's a lot of socioeconomic background behind these three settings. But the show doesn't need to explain everything right off the bat, because we can infer a lot from the costumes and production design. For instance, we can tell immediately that Belters are poor compared to the population and infrastructure of Earth and Mars. Belter characters also speak in a different dialect, separating them from the more traditional English spoken elsewhere. Oye, Beltalada, listen up! And Belters often have tattoos that mark them out as members of a certain crew or subculture. Some of those tattoos symbolically trace back to a time when spacesuits would create scars around the neck and shoulders, an identifying marker among the belt's early settlers. Unlike some sci-fi fantasy stories that create clumsy fictional analogies for real-world social divides, 
The Expanse does a pretty good job because the world building is so complex. We see a variety of nuanced viewpoints across the board, and after five seasons, the show has really dug into the background of Earth, Mars and the Belt. But in the beginning, without the extra context, we could still understand the general gist. Ah. Yam Sen. Yam Sen. The belt is visibly grimy and overcrowded, featuring characters who take great pride in their appearance both as individuals and as a distinct community. Their hairstyles are more adventurous than anything we see from Earth or Mars, but at the same time, belter fashion choices are often geared towards the constraints of their lifestyle. For instance, braids, buns and undercuts keep your hair from floating around in low gravity. Meanwhile, our first introduction to Mars makes a very different impact. We see characters wearing neat and orderly uniforms, travelling in a clean and dangerous looking military ship. Martian characters are the least likely to modify their appearance or make bold fashion choices. Their spaceships and architecture follow a utilitarian theme, and there is a strong sense of patriotic pride in the military, with uniforms being a central part of many people's identity. Martians don't appreciate frivolous fashion because they're very aware of their planet's lack of natural resources. Unlike the Belters, they don't value rebellion. It would be awkward and shameful to make yourself look too wealthy or different on Mars, because everyone is meant to prioritize the collective future of Martian civilization. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Just like in real life, the majority of Expanse characters wear clothes that loosely conform to their surroundings, whether that's cultural trends or environmental considerations. Their personalities shine through in smaller details, like Miller's 1940s detective hat or Amos's habit of rolling up his sleeves to show off his arms. But there are always a few people who care very strongly about fashion. The Expanse's most memorable example is Christian Avarsarala, played by Shore Agdashlu. Avasarala is a ruthless Earth politician with a strong personality, constantly dressed in luxurious saris and jackets with bulky, eye-catching jewellery. She looks like royalty. She commands attention wherever she goes and has no interest in blending in with the more subdued look of the people around her, most of whom wear grey suits or military uniforms. When I interviewed the show's costume designer Joanne Hansen in 2018, she explained that Avasarala's costumes intentionally look back to the past, combining modern details with the drape of 16th or 17th century saris. It's essentially the opposite of belter fashion, a DIY style based on scarcity of materials in a grim cyberpunk setting. Avasarala can dress the way she does because she has access to luxurious resources and because she doesn't need to worry about practical concerns like low gravity or physical labour. Her appearance embraces stereotypical symbols of Earth culture – luxury, frivolity and an attachment to humanity's past. However, the show doesn't actually portray her fashion choices in a negative light. While Avasarala is a morally ambiguous figure, she isn't a villain. The Expanse offers a more layered attitude than something like The Hunger Games, where fashion is used as a direct marker of decadence and evil among the ruling classes. In fact, Avasarala often comes across as the most pragmatic and sensible of Earth's leaders, while many of her compatriots are driven by personal ambition. It's this kind of nuance and detail that makes The Expanse such a strong piece of sci-fi storytelling. Well done, madam. Thanks for watching Behind the Seams. If you're interested in the political background of sci fi fashion, be sure to check out my episode about Alien, linked here and in the description. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.